Hello, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly. Hello everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly and in today's video we are going to be doing a walkthrough on the programming and setup for the Beast X, uh, Micro Beast X Plus and or um, the AR7200BX which is what I'm using. Um, this is going to be for the Spectrum based remote um, transmitters. Take in mind the setup process is somewhat the same for all three systems. There are some different selectable menus, but the basic principle of entering and exiting menus and adjusting your parameters is just about the same. So I'm going to be doing my video on the AR7200. Um, it should work on the AR7210, the Beast X, the Micro Beast X Plus. There'll just be a couple of differences with some of the parameters, okay? Um, so with that being said, you see I've got my model prepped and ready here. This is the Spectre 700. Um, I've got everything installed. Of course, of course, with the Spectrum, I just have to provide the, the one Spectrum satellite. If you're using uh, any other different variation, just, just uh, install everything accordingly that way. Um, at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the, the initial radio setup first. Then we'll go ahead and do the binding procedure and then move forward into the programming. Depending upon how long this is, um, we might just get to the swash plate and main rotor first and then have to do the rudder as an additional. Um, but I'll try to make it as user-friendly as possible. Now, also, please note that during the build procedures here, I did remove the main rotor off the machine, as you guys can see there. And then what I've also done is I went ahead and made up my three pitch links for my servo to swash plate, and I set them exactly per the manual. In my manual, it wants 37.5 millimeters. Again, this is a 700, though. If you've got a 450, a 500, 600, just set up your linkages per the manual. Because I'm going to show you a really cool trick with that. And then what I did, what I usually will do, is I will I will fasten my link to the pin on my swash. But I won't Loctite it yet because we have to remove this out to twist the link. It's much easier. And then I went ahead and installed in my servo horns with the ball. But I haven't put the actual screws in yet in case we have to readjust or reorient. Now... Um, real real quick disclosure here guys before we do the radio setup we are going to have to go into the beast x and actually set up the proper servo frequencies um, and pulse widths and everything for the servos some people like to do this with this unplug but the factory settings are usually really low I've never had any issues there I will recommend however that you leave the servo arms unattached from the servos at this point because when the system starts up, if it centers your servos and this arm happens to bind or something, you could potentially cause some damage. So, get your radio out. Let's get ready for radio setup. Get all this done, but do not connect your servo arms yet. Mine are connected because I've already went through this process. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the initial radio settings. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and we'll start from uh, what would be considered scratch. We'll do a brand new model. Now, if you're using any other radio, please um, just note that within your menus in your specific radio and however you enter and exit them, um, everything should be pretty, uh, what's the word, unilateral, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and power up my transmitter. Now, on Spectrum, of course, if you hold down your scrolling wheel and power on, it'll enter into the setup parameters here. Let me bump this open. Okay, here we go. So step number one, of course, you'll select your new model. Model type for the Beast X, you will want to make sure it's set to Heli. Take in mind on Spectrum, if you select anything or even select Heli again, it will wipe the model, so be careful there. Uh, model name, of course, I labeled mine Spectre 700. Feel free to label yours as needed. Now, this is important. Some people get hung up on this. The Beast X system is still going to be a CCPM 120-degree um, swash plate setup. But, it's done within the mixing of the Beast X unit. It is not done within the mixing of the transmitter. Um, some of you that converted from flybar helicopters are used to doing this. Uh, and I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, there's still some systems out there that have you do it in the radio. Maybe like the 3G, 3GX and whatnot. For the Beast, we're going to want to make sure that we have set it to normal or one servo 90 degrees. Um, you might see those two different terminologies because there's going to be a menu in the Beast X that's going to allow us to set 
the swash mixing, okay? So that's step one there. Make sure that you're at normal or one servo 90. Flight mode setups, again, all personal preference, but if you're using the Spectrum brand again, um, you're always going to toggle between and make sure that your idle up switches are working. You can see here on the bottom that it's toggling between 2, 1, and normal. And this screen will go ahead and activate our throttle hold, assign it to a switch. And you can see over here on the right, it's allowing us to toggle in between our throttle hold. Okay, just a quick and easy setup there. And then you have the other, you know, fun things to play with, like spoken flight mode. Um, we don't need to bother with channel assign or trim setups or anything else. So that right there will be your basic setup on the radio. Now, one other thing that I will I will do before I go and bind my model. Some people like to disconnect the um, the motor from the electronic speed controller just for safety, and I highly support that, of course. In my case, I have the main rotor off, and I have no blades on the machine, and I, I have my wiring all tidy. So I don't want to go ahead and unplug stuff. So one thing I'm going to do is we're going to come down here to our throttle curves. Right now, the ESC engagement with the motor is not something that's important to us. We're doing the CCPM setup, mixing, and, and um, blade pitch and everything. So as you guys can see here in my radio, I went ahead and set all my throttle curves for normal idle 1 and idle 2 they're all at 0 completely flat that way if at any time I'm moving my sticks or something the machine cannot spool up on me and then we'll go back and we'll fix this later when we're ready to calibrate our ESC and 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 get ready for our flights pitch curves make sure normal idle 1 and idle 2 are all linear pitch curves 0 25 50 75 100 um, Make sure you guys don't go in there mess with any pitch curves or anything. The gyro menu, I'll give you a quick look at. We're going to go through this here in a moment once we get into the tail setup and everything. This is usually disabled by default. So a lot of people run into issues where their gyro is acting a little funny. So we'll go into that once we do the tail portion. Right now, not the most important thing. Uh, and that right there is it, you guys. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to successfully bind the model. Okay, now that we've completed the initial setup within the transmitter, we're going to go ahead and do the bind. Now, as I spoke earlier, there's a couple different ways in which you can complete this. If you want to unplug all your servos for safety, complete the bind, and then as we progress, you can go into the programming and, and select all your servo settings for the frequencies, and then just, just exit programming and plug back in. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything plugged in. Um, I did plug in the bind plug into the bind port. You'll notice right here um, on the very top, it's got the bind section here. Go ahead and throw in your bind plug that usually comes with your system, which is a little black plug with a with a looped cable. And you'll notice <coughs> you'll notice that when I supply power to the machine, I'm going to get the the flashing sequence here. Now, quick note too: if you guys are using like the Micro Beast X Plus or 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 the Beast X Pro HD or any of the other models out there. Mine is Spectrum Platform, so I just have one satellite in. Uh, when I plug it in, plug in the bind plug, it flashes. On some of the other BSTEC systems, you have to actually go in and select whether you're using a Spectrum satellite, a Spectrum receiver, um, Futaba, so forth and so on. So just note, you might have to do that if you're not using the 7200 or 7210. So I'm going to go ahead and supply power here real fast. And we should initiate the blinking. Okay. Now, when you bind, uh, every transmitter has a way for you to enter into your binding, of course. You should be familiar with that. With Spectrum, um, all you got to do is hold down a toggle switch and power on. Um, my bind is located, of course, right here, this little button. Don't point your transmitter directly at the machine, and don't hold it right here while you bind. So I'm going to step away here and actually turn my back and point my, my radio away, and I'll turn it on and enter in binding mode. So let's see if you guys can hear it. There we go, bind complete. And you'll notice that they went from flashing to solid, and now the Beast X is doing its little song and dance, and then on my radio it enters me into the main menu. So now that we have successfully bound the helicopter, I'm going to disconnect power. We'll power down my transmitter here. 
and then I can remove the bind plug because if we power back up it's going to enter into bind mode again. So I'm going to remove the bind plug. We've done our initial setup on the radio. The machine is now bound. So let's talk about how to enter into our programmable settings and we can start programming and teaching the BSTEC system. Okay guys, so for this first step here, I want to make sure we get familiar with what we're looking at so as we progress through the programming stages, um, we're going to be comfortable with entering and exiting our different parameter menus, our setup menus, what the lights mean and everything, so forth and so on. So I'm trying to do a bit of a split screen setup here or maybe kind of um, diverting back to one or the other. So as you guys can see here, we've got the, the AR7200 or BSTEX unit. Um, and it, of course, it's got all these crazy rows of, of lights and letters and, and, and this and that, right? Um, your three dial gain bots here, just try to make sure that they're factory set or at 50% or just straight across. Now, let's jump over here to the screen that I'm looking at real fast. This is the setup um, menus and parameters for the system. Most manuals come with this little card handy or you can just get online and get the, the PDF for it or whatnot. Now, two important things. Okay, There's going to be a set of selectable options known as the setup menu. As you guys can see there. There is also going to be another set of selectable options known as parameter menu. A lot of people get this confused and so did I. Trust me, it took me a while to kind of figure out. Essentially, your parameter menus, which are all shown down below here, are the uh, different menus where you can adjust the overall behavior and feel of some of the features of the unit. Example, your control behaviors, uh, your cyclic responses, your pitch boost settings, heading lock gains, so forth and so on. We do not need to worry about parameter menus right now. What we do need to worry about is this indication here where it specifies that the status LED, in order to enter this menu, will be, this little icon um, symbolizes flashing. Okay, I, I don't know, it should just say flashing, but it doesn't, so that's flashing. Now, if we go back up here, the setup menu portion is the important part for, for right now because this is how we're going to teach our fly barless unit how to um, properly respond to the electronical components that we now have plugged into it. So we're going to enter into setup menu first, which means we need to have, this indicates right here, a solid LED. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you in just a quick moment. Just note that once you jump into either the solid LED setup menu or the flashing LED parameter menu, you're immediately going to jump into option A on either one of the two. So once you enter in, do not touch your sticks on your transmitter until you're ready to make a selectable option. With that being said, we're going to, we're going to take a look at these columns just real briefly because we're going to go through them together. But we're going to be entering setup menu with a solid status light. I'm going to demonstrate that again in just one moment. And we'll uh, immediately enter into menu A. Now, per this graph here, and, and please take in mind, it, it's got, I believe, German on this side, so if anybody out there is German, hopefully this helps. I didn't want to split it down the middle. Um, option A, basic, right here. It's going to ask us, what is my mounting orientation? You're going to see all these columns here of different light sequences or different answers. No light off, you purple, red flashing, yada, yada, yada. Right, that's pretty basic. So you're going to be able to scroll down each of these columns um, and answer with the correct corresponding color for the settings that you wish to have. Example, mounting orientation. If my light is red solid, which I'm going to show you guys how to select this again, um, that means that we've mounted the BSTEX in a upright or vertical fashion on its side maybe, or on the side of a helicopter frame, um, or it only gives us one other option, which is blue solid. That would be a horizontal or flat. I'm going to say this is probably most. You'll notice, though, each column has a little star or asterisk, if you will, by it. That is the factory setting. Um, don't ever assume that it's 100% correct just by reading through this. Always double check, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a first, uh, the first couple sets of these. And then once we get down to uh, this position here, 
we're going to have a little bit more to talk about. So I'm going to walk you guys through A to F. We'll talk about each one and, and how they work. And then once we get to this one, we'll have a little bit more of a conversation. Now, last thing to note is each menu that you're in, so once we enter into menu, uh, menu A, it's, it's as simple as moving your rudder left or right to select the light that indicates the setting that you wish. So if we're on blue solid, but we need to change it, just move your rudder left or right till the light is solid. We'll then exit that menu and move on by simply pressing the button. Okay, so let me jump over here and let's go ahead and demonstrate what that's going to look like if I actually enter in and exit my menus. So I'm going to enter in and we'll just stay on, on menu A, mounting orientation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and power up my transmitter. And I'm going to pro provide power to the system here. Give it a quick second to initialize. Okay. And you'll notice that it does this little series of lights. A lot of the times, not only is it searching for its signal, but it's also going to show you an indication of what version you have, too, and it'll specify that in your manual. Now, everything's good. Everything has initialized. So you'll notice here, um, let's see if we can make it. Yeah, if you guys can see that we've got that LED status on here right now, um, you'll notice the spot on the, on the unit that says status. We have a, a violet or purple light right now, if you want to call it that. What this signifies, just so nobody's thrown off at this point, is right now we haven't done any programming yet into the unit, and it senses no gyroscopic um, correctivity for the rudder. This is an indication for the rudder. Um, a violet light means that we're in rate mode right now for the rudder. We're going to be doing the rudder after. I like to do the front end first, then the tail after. So there will be a couple menus that we jump over, and then in the next video, we'll go back and, and complete those. By all means, if this video makes sense to you right out of the gate, feel free to complete the rudder as we progress and save yourself some time. Um, but just note that that's what that means. If I was in heading hold mode and I went and um, set up all the parameters for the tail, this status LED would then be blue, which signifies we're ready to fly. But let's ignore that for now. What we're going to want to look at is, is um, pressing our set button. Now, the way this will work is as soon as I press it, um, our status LED is going to begin flashing up here. If I let go, as soon as it starts flashing, again, per our graph, we're going to be entering into the parameter menu. We do not want to do this yet. What we want to enter into at this time is going to be the setup menu. So you'll notice if I hold the button down even longer, three seconds or so, the, the status LED will then... Um, go to a solid. Once it is solid, release. We will then be in mounting orientation menu A. So let's do that here. Okay, got the flash. We now have the solid. Release. Now, let's read the beast X for a minute here. Um, you'll notice I've got a, an LED indicator on menu A, and my status light is now blue. So, if we, if we take a quick look back over here at our graph, we are in Setup Menu with a solid light, and now we're going to be in Menu A, Mounting Orientation. I only have two options, Blue Solid, Red Solid. Right now I'm on Blue Solid, obviously, because I'm mounted flat. But just to demonstrate for you guys, if I move my rudder stick left or right, it'll go to red. So now, if I push this button, it's going to exit into the next menu and save that setting. So let's make sure we're on blue because that's our orientation. Just choose accordingly. And then let's go ahead and hit our set button. And you'll notice that it's now going to jump us over to menu B. Uh, menu B will be the swash plate servo frequency. This is why some people don't like to have their servos plugged in at this time because if you have a different type of servo, maybe not so high end, and it doesn't like to have a really high frequency. Um, it could cause damage, but I'm not worried about it because as we talked about, if we look over at our graph, our factory default setting right here is set to purple, which is only 50 hertz, very, very low. I can't see that causing any damage, okay? So, what you're gonna wanna do, guys, is if you get online, 
and look up Beast X Servo List on Google. Um, that'll be what I've got right here. I'm using an aligned servo um, for my cyclics and my rudder at this time. Um, so what you do is you come to this list. It's got everything, Futabas, uh, uh, high techs, uh, JRs, all that stuff. Okay, so um, you can also filter them right here from the top. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to find, if we look at this graph, you've got swash plate frequency, you've got your pulse lengths, and then you also have your rudder frequencies. Um, my cyclic servos are the BL700H. So I'm going to scroll through. BL700H is located here. These are my cyclic servos. I need to know the servo frequency, which is my setup menu B. Boom. Come down right here. It wants me to be at blue 200 hertz. Okay. So jump back over here. 200 hertz is going to be a blue solid. So jumping back over to the Beast X. You guys will notice my status LED is on blue solid. Again, if you need to change this, rudder left or right until you have the desired color, and then we'll go ahead and push the set button and move on. Um, one quick thing to note, guys, some of these menus will exit if you sit for too long, so I'm going to try to not let that happen. If it does, I'll jump back in. Um, but just note, some of them are designed to exit automatically. Uh, we have now jumped over here to menu C, as indicated on the Beast X. Uh, this is the Tel Servo center position pulse, uh, pulse length. Uh, most servos are going to either be red solid at 760 or blue solid at 1520. I have yet to use one that's at 960, um, but but you never know, right? It's, it's there for a reason. Same thing, jump back over, boom, to our, our list. Uh, my Tel Servo is the, uh, oh gosh, what is it too? I think it's the DS820M, I think is what it is. Uh, no, it's 825N, there we go. Um, so, same thing though, right? This one right here, our, our, our setup menu, see pulse length, wants me at 1520, and it's going to ask me in a minute for menu D for the rudder frequency, so let's grab that information too, 330 hertz. So we need 1520, 330 hertz, based upon my servo specs. Jumping in, we're on C, 1520, it is a factory default, but I should be at a blue solid. So let's check our Beast X. I see myself a blue solid. So let's go ahead and save that setting. And that's going to bring us down to menu D. Jump back over to our graph here. Tell servo frequency. Um, factory setting, 50 hertz, but oh, we're going to amp ours up to the 333. Now note on this one, this, is, this one's got a higher setting at, at 560. Maybe more specialty, more high-end servo. Uh, and it's got your lower values. We need to be at 330 per our graph. So blue flashing. And notice I got a blue flashing light. Boom. Let's save that setting. Now this one here we're not going to worry about at this time. Menu E is our tail servo endpoints. If we had all of our linkages and everything set up at this point, all you do is move your rudder all the way to the left until it stops on your on your tail shaft. It'll save. Then you move it to the right. Stop, it'll save. And I'm going to go through this with you guys when we do the rudder setup, but if you want to progress forward, feel free to do that step right now. For me, I'm just going to leave everything alone and skip it. And that brings us to menu F. Sensor direction. Again, my tail is not set up yet. I have no idea whether I'm going left or right. So I'm going to leave this one at the factory setting of red solid. If you know the answer to this question, Feel free to put it blue solid. It's up to you um, if you want to do the tail setup for now. Now here's the big one. We're gonna we're gonna save our progress so far and jump into menu G. If for any reason your servos were unplugged, now would be the time to just push the button a bunch of times and exit. Unplug, plug in your servos, power back up, and get back into menu G. If your servos have been plugged in this whole time, don't even worry about it. Menu G is probably one of the most important steps thus far because this is going to allow us to 90 our uh, cyclic servos, get them at 90 degrees, uh, level our swash plate as well. So what I'm going to do is let's jump over to the graph here real quick. Let's make sure we're looking at the same thing because this menu gets a little bit on the tricky side. 
If you notice, um, looking back over at the Beast X, right now our status light is off. And if we look back over here at the graph, you'll notice it gives us a purple option, which is for the elevator center position, a red solid option, aileron center position, and a blue solid option, which is pitch center position. Now people get confused with this because they look at the Beast X, let's jump back over here, you've plugged only three servos in for the cyclics. Um, one of them is in an auxiliary port, um, aux one if you will, and then you've got aileron and elevator. So sometimes it gets confused that each one of these settings is for each um, uh, mixing feature, and it's not, it's for each servo, okay? So the pitch servo, jumping back over to the graph, the pitch servo here, or the blue solid, will be whichever servo's in that auxiliary port. Don't get that confused with pitch like your swash plate is moving up and down. It's just one servo, okay? But, here's what we're gonna do. Let me go ahead and reposition my camera real fast so we can get a look at the swash plate, because that's gonna be crucial to this next step. So let me reconfigure here real quick, guys, and we will continue on. Okay, guys, so, Resuming on here with menu G, um, I tried to reposition the camera the best I could to, to give you the, the most amount of information possible. This can be a little tricky. Now, let's, let's start from the basics. Let's assume you had not put your servo arms on yet, um, but you have went ahead and put the balls on, you know, per the, per the manufactured specifications in your manual, um, distance from servo and all that. Let's say that you have made up your pitch links per the manual specs, and you went and put your swash plate on. This menu in particular has four different settings. Light off, and then you'll notice if I move my rudder, each time I do, it's gonna wiggle one of my three servos. If we look at the graph, elevator should be first. So if everything is plugged in correctly, if I move one time, elevator should jump, and it does. Now, if I move again, it should move to my aileron servo. Take in mind, based on your wiring, aileron can either be the front left or front right. It does not matter. So my aileron is located right there. And let's move over to the pitch servo. As we talked about, it's not the function of pitch. It's just the servo and the aux port. Boom. Now, if I hit the rudder again, it's going to go back to light off. And this is what's known as your reference point, or almost like a neutral position. Um, I do not use this menu. Full disclosure. Um, some may call me wrong. Some may call me right. My B-Stack systems fly pretty damn good. The reason why I don't use this menu is it puts the servos, what I'm assuming is supposed to be center. But once you put your servo horn on, if you try to just sit and position your servo horn as close to 90 as mechanically possible, and then you toggle your rudder, it seems to throw everything off. Whereas, I found that if at any time during this step, menu G, you always have at least one of your three servos selected, your end result is a hundred times better and more accurate, especially with your travel limits. Um, then if you go into menu G and use the reference position, which would be light off, and then you put your servo arms on, you use a lot more trim. I, I don't know what the deal is. Um, maybe I'm just not educated enough in this particular spot, but I never use this. So what I do is I enter into menu G, and obviously we're at, the light is off on our um, system here, so we're in our reference position. I'm just going to select the first servo, which is aileron. Now that that has been selected, I will then... Put my servo horn on the elevator servo as close to 90 as mechanically possible. Um, and here's what I'm going to do, guys, is if our three links from servo to swash and our geometry, you know, if the machine is designed correctly, in theory, if I can get one servo at a dead 90 degree spot, I, d I don't have to worry about 90-ing all the other servos because I'm just going to put a leveling tool on and then 90 my servos. And in theory, if all my links are the same length, I should have a level swash. That does not mean that mechanically we have the right amount of travel. That's why our, our links are meant to be adjustable. So let's not confuse that and let's not step ahead too far. What we want to do 
is let's go back to our neutral position here, okay? I'm gonna select the elevator servo right there. I'm gonna then position my servo horn as close to 90 degrees as mechanically possible. <coughs> now, once you have that, if it looks like it's a dead 90, leave it alone. Uh, if it needs a little bit of tweaking, all you have to do is come over to your transmitter and move your elevator uh, up or down. Okay, elevator, not aileron. Move your elevator slightly up or slightly down and you'll notice that the servo will move. Now, please don't panic if you move the elevator stick forward and your servo goes down or you move it down and it goes up. We don't care about the direction. What we care about is getting this servo at 90 degrees. And I'm going to choose a master servo when I do my programming. So in this case, we're going to make the elevator the master servo. That's what I'm going to key all the other servos off. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the elevator stick on my transmitter up and down until I can see visually that my elevator servo is locked in at a 90 degree setting or whatever it is the manual specifies that you need, right? And guys, don't don't overthink this, okay? It's very simple. Just eyeball it. If that bad boy looks 90, call it good. Now, once we have our master servo done, what I am then going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and we'll move on to the next servo. And I'll just I'll do what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just place my servo arm on mechanically as close to 90 as possible. Sometimes it's a little off. But don't sub-trim it yet. And by sub-trim, I mean don't use your elevator to adjust it quite yet. Just leave it on at a mechanical 90. Our master servo we trimmed. Um, but these other ones, we're just going to mechanically get where they need to be, right? So get your servo horn on. Get your link uh, snapped on there, okay? Next servo, select it. Put your arm on as close to uh, a 90 degrees as mechanically possible. Do not add those trims in yet, okay? And then boom. We're back into neutral. You're going to notice your servos are all skawampus at this point. Don't panic. It's normal. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to get out, which I hope you have for your model, is a swash plate leveling tool. I highly recommend for best results to always, always, always use one. Um, some people have amazing eyesight. Unfortunately, I don't. But I do have a good vibe for my machines. But nothing will make your heli be more stable and respond better than a perfectly level swash, okay? So, again, we're in the reference point. I do not use this menu at all, but we just went through and we set our servo horns mechanically at 90 for all three servos, and on the elevator, our master servo, we actually trimmed that one out at a 90 degree, right? Boom, 90 degrees here. So what I'm shooting at here, you guys, is I wanna make sure that if all of three of my links are at exactly the uh, manufactured specified length, which on my kit is 37.5 millimeters from, from plastic to plastic, right? In theory, if I 90 my other two servos with sub trim, based upon the master servo and the master link, swash plate should be level. If it's not, your math is off, okay? So select our master servo, in my case, elevator. And I'm going to take my swash leveling tool and I'm going to put it on. And I'm going to see what kind of readout I get, right? Maybe one servo is a little high, one servo is a little low. Uh, maybe both of these are way up high and the elevator is not even touching. Whatever the case may be, I know that I'm not going to bother the master servo or the master link. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skip that and let's move to this guy. This guy jumps. So let's throw this on. Again, using my elevator stick, I'm going to move forward, or I'm sorry, uh, um, um, up or down, forward or backwards, however you want to word that, until, don't even look at your servo at this point, because this might surprise you. Um, look at the position where the swash plate tool connects with the swash plate, and level that based on your master servo and master link. So, for example, if this servo was high and it was sitting above, I'm going to be dropping that down until this sits flat on my key servo. Once I have that, go ahead and take a look at your geometry. You might go, holy hell, that servo is 90 degrees. Look at that. Uh, if it's not, then chances are your linkage is off. Same thing. We'll select our next servo. Boom. 
Now we might get the same results, right? It might not even touch that arm on the swash plate, or it might be high and it's not touching any of these. Same thing. Elevator stick on your transmitter, forward, backwards, uh, up or down, whatever you want to use there, until now all three of these should sit flat. Once you get there, look at your geometry. You might go, holy hell, that's at 90 degrees. Now everything should be flush, everything should be level. Now, at this point, again, I must specify, this does not mean that the swash plate is going to be in its neutral position as far as getting zero degrees of pitch on your main blades. But what we do know is that all three of our servos are 90, and all three of our links are equal in length, which means we have a level and a happy swash. The reason why we need this information, which I will demonstrate as we progress here, is if we have to adjust this swash plate mechanically with these link rods up or down, all we have to do is turn these rods in equal length and our swash is going to be level at all times. All right? It eliminates a lot of the, of the headache later on. So um, enough of that. I hope that makes sense, guys. Again, double check everything. Neutral position. There's my master servo and my master link. Swash tool goes on. Adjust your sub trims as needed. And mine is perfect. And again, I did do this before the video, so, so please forgive me for that. Um, now, don't get rid of your swash leveling tool yet. There is another big key feature coming up here in just a moment. But menu G is, is one of probably the most misunderstood menus, um, or at least the menus I get the, the most questions about with programming a fly barless unit. This one in particular. So with the Beast X the AR7200, or any other platform, that's how I use mine and that's how I do it. I cannot say that this is the same for other systems like the Icon and the V-Bar and, and this and that. We're, we're talking about just this one system, okay? Now, uh, Menu G is one of those menus that will not exit automatically for you. You notice mine hasn't jumped out yet, but I do try to keep the system active, so I'll wiggle stuff around once in a while. But there we go. We have a level swash, 90 degrees on our servos. Our links should be the same length. We can now move on to the next menu with confidence because we've got our foundation constructed and the machine's ready to move forward. Um, the next one to look at, um, let me jump in here, is uh, essentially what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be progressing through the next couple of menus that are just going to teach some of the geometries and also the uh, the movements and everything of the system. Um, take in mind, I don't have the main rotor on yet, so things like the um, collective pitch throw and everything, we're going to skip over, and then I'll install the main rotor and we'll jump back into those menus. Um, but for right now, we're focusing on servos, swash plate, and, and uh, sensory directions and everything, okay? So let me reposition the camera for a better view on these, and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, progress and we'll move forward.